Hey guys, this is Nate Picos of Blambot, and I haven't updated the uh, videos in a while, but I thought I'd do a quick one here. Um, I get questioned a lot about uh, concepts of fonts and, and, you know, where do you get your ideas and what are the first steps and pretty much everything of mine either starts out um, as ink on vellum or pencil on vellum or pencil on Bristol or I start, you know, directly in uh, Adobe Illustrator. And here's what, here's the early stages of something new. I, I'll sometimes just put together a few letters for maybe an issue of a comic I'm lettering to make a sound effect. And I think it has some promise. So I'll hold on to it and come back to it later and maybe build out the rest of the alphabet. And uh, I thought I'd show you kind of how I do that here. Here's a sound effect track that um, I think I used somewhere. I can't quite remember, but I, I, I dug the fact that it kind of looked like, you know, vintage classic comic sound effect kind of a thing, something kind of gritty and hand done. So I started building out the alphabet, and here we are in the really early stages of everything. Um, uh, just to note, you should know that I'm working on an, uh, an Intuos Medium tablet um, from Wacom. Um, so I thought we'd, you know, I'd show you how I build a letter. I'm just sort of freehanding these letters right now, and they're at very early stages, and I'm going to probably come back to them a million times and, you know, tweak them. And, and the way I decide what works and what doesn't basically is to create a bunch of letters and start, you know, cobbling together words and what looks cool and what doesn't. And that's really what it comes down to as far as, I'm concerned in comics lettering, does it look cool? Or to me anyway. And if it does, it, I, you know, I keep going. And if it doesn't, I, I put it aside and work on something else. Uh, maybe come back to it my, when my mind has changed. But I thought I'd just sort of freehand some a letter or two here and show you, you know, how I do this and then put together a sound effect. Um, you know, and eventually this process will go on. It could be a couple of weeks. It could be months. It could be six months. Um, you know, every font is kind of different. I've got to build out all the letters, all the numbers, accents, you know, all that stuff. So anyway, and I'm doing two of each of these just to start out with, um, you know, just to, to fill out the keys and see which ones I like better. I could do three and on my dialogue fonts. Now I've been doing six different versions of every letter and including them all. So let's uh, let's get into it here. I'm trying to decide which letter I want to work on next. Maybe another K. Um, I've already done one K right here, and I noticed that this this style seemed to work best without a lot of hard edges or hard corners rather. So you'll notice the corners here are all kind of smooth, and when you know you put them together like that, it just kind of looked neat. It looks a little more hand drawn. It looked like it had a little bit of an ink bleed to it, like an old comic book page. And sometimes really hard edges on, on corners of things tends to stand out too much against artwork. Um, looks more like a sticker slapped on there than an actual, you know, something that was done that's going to work hand in hand with the artwork. So let's just work on a K. And I work on things in chunks, really. I'll make, like, see this downstroke right here? I'll maybe do that first, and then this diagonal stroke, and then this one. But I like to look at the one I've already established that I like as I'm building the others. Um, so I'm just going to go to, let's see, I'll go to my pencil tool, I guess. Oops. And, and then you kind of put things side by side, but for now, let's just start building. And, and I like to make sure they're a little bit different than the one I've already got, because, you know, you want to keep things organic. And when they work side by side, you want them to look slightly different. So this one, this downstroke has a slight arc to it. So maybe I'll do one that's either straight or the other way or, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, I'm kind of just making it bumpy. This is just an initial pass. And I'm going to show you some cool stuff with um, AI has this new tool that I'm going to show you that's pretty cool. It's like a little thumbtack thing that I use all the time. All right, I have this. Let's fill it with black. Oops, not red, black. Get rid of that. 
right there. I can already tell. And this is, you know, you start with chunks and you, you move things around a little bit. And there's going to be a massive cleanup stage once this all goes to Font Lab. So I'm not too worried about a lot of stray nodes right now. And uh, I'm sorry if this is going to bore a lot of people who aren't into fonts, but, you know, font nerds might like this stuff. So we just go around, maybe do a first cursory cleanup. And it doesn't matter that it's, it's bigger than everything else right now. I'll, I'll scale it, you know, when I need to. Um, and you'll note that the downstroke, the diagonals are a little thinner. Um, and it kind of, it's, I'm not holding this. It's not like uh, it has to be that way. It's, again, whatever looks cool. But um, so maybe this time we'll just use the pen tool instead of the pencil and we'll come out here and make some, you know, some of these weird bumpy things. And it, it's a little weird to talk while I'm doing this because usually, you know, I sit in silence and I don't have to describe what I'm doing. I just kind of do it. So something like that, which might go there. And also, I, there's some things that should be consistent across a font, uh, at least in my opinion, uh, most of the time. Like the, these legs on an R should kind of look like the legs on the K. You know, it looks like the same person did it and kind of use the same, um, you know, style or, or, or tendencies. So maybe... And I noticed while I was building the other letters that smaller bumps seem to look better with this. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. And there's a little bit of almost like a natural wiggle to it where um, you'll see as this stroke comes down, it, it kind of follows an angle and it, that happens throughout. They're not just random bumps. They kind of, um, they kind of mirror each other on the other sides, but not exactly. You know, it's got to look a little bit messy. And I'm already not thrilled with this leg. It, it needs a lot of cleanup, but it's a good start. So what I'll do is I'll grab this. Here's that K. I'm going to drag this up next to it and kind of work on them side by side. And near, it, it's, it's all about context when you're building fonts. You, you start off sort of looking at the trees, and then you take into consideration the forest because it's all going to be seen as a unit when you start, when somebody, the end user starts typing words. And in this case, sound effects. Um, so this is a little too big. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Um, maybe this can come out. And this, this font has sort of an upward slant on the, uh, the right side. So we're going to make sure that kind of happens throughout. Yeah, I'm still not thrilled with this leg, but I'm going to sit here and, you know, tweak it out and and play with it some more. But I don't want to bore you with all that stuff. Let's say I'm happy with this. I'm not, but, you know, I'll come back to it. So what you do is then you take your new letter and you just make a, a word or a sound. In this case, I'll make a sound effect with it, like, like the Shrek right here. Um, something with maybe two Ks, like, a, I don't know. And, you know, it's, I'm unlimited right now by the amount of letters I have, too. So let's just do something simple and easy. I'll grab a B. Uh, B, R. I don't know. It's going to be a weird sound effect. But anyway, just to give you the idea. I'll grab two Ks. We'll do them side by side. Oh, you know what? Let's, let's do the C instead of the B. It'll make a little more sense. Get rid of that. So I'll just drag things off the off the artboard and I'll start doing this just like I would do a sound effect if I were lettering a comic. So these are the letters I've already I'm already happy with. Uh, you know, I'll just unite all these pieces so it's one thing. And you know, this is just this is where my testing of the design happens. You know, I'm just sort of building these like I would build a sound effect. Maybe it gets a little bigger as it goes away. 
I don't like the way the C is too close to the R here. Maybe pull this back a little bit. So you're kind of getting a two for one lesson here. Here's me creating a sound effect as well as, you know, letters for a font. And I like to slant things a little bit. It, it makes things more dynamic. So let's see, we've got this. And um, I'm going to just unite them, maybe put an outline around them because, you know, that's what I would be doing with a sound effect font. And we'll fill it with this color. And maybe, you know, something like that. I don't like the way the E is touching the K here, but you kind of get the idea. There, there's a little too many tangents happening in this, but I just wanted you to see. It looks, it doesn't look bad. Um, like I said, this leg right here is really annoying me, and I'm going to go back and fix that. But you sort of get the idea, and you do these tests as you go along, you know. And I save these too as I'm building them to, to give me an idea again of looking at the forest and not just the trees. You've got to see how everything works together and if it's successful. So that's how it works. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up and maybe uh, in, a, in a few weeks or a month or two, this font will be finished and it will be in your hands and you'll have had an inside look at its creation. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.